Today is October 2nd. The Yankees played the Orioles. Judge chased down 61 homers and some interesting injuries and updates about who makes the postseason roster and who's not. Let's talk it. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks presented to you by Seat Geek. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. BBD in the corner. It's our first episode of October. Autumnal weather. I've been pretty happy about all of that. Yankees play a couple meaningless games. Judge chases the home run record. We went to the first game. You did you go to Saturday or Sunday? Mm-mm. How you doing? James Davis. Hope everyone is doing well in the chat and everyone tuning in with us. Yeah, it would have been uh, nice if it was a little drier to enjoy the uh, the autumnal weather as as it is full blown here. And it's funny, you know, you talked about those couple hot weeks in September you were you were dreading. It did feel like it went from like heavy summer to like fall fall. Um and it's really going to feel like that way in about a week or so when, uh, man, we are going to be in the teeth of it. We're going to be doing a bunch of live streams and stuff, all playoffs long. Uh, not Yankees, Yankees, so hope you guys are joining us uh, and we'll have some fun. But, yeah, man, it's a weird one, huh? We, we you know, peeling back the curtain, sat here and are like, what do we talk about? Because the series didn't matter. Kester was talking about that. A lot of the people in the stands were there for Judge. And a lot of Yankee fans, all they want to talk about is bullpen slash the roster crunch. So, we're going to talk about all those because that's what we want to talk about as well. So, uh, But man, I'm doing well and I've got good news for you. I'm going to have to take the headset off for a second so I won't be able to hear you. This is actually your Oswaldo necklace. I have mine here and I'm going to leave it here for you so when you come back, you'll have access to your... As Waldo Cabrera necklace. Choker version looks way better on you. Yeah, obviously. Than the big one. I kind of yeah. look like as Waldo. Like, I can kind of do the Elvis 50s hair and, like... Do it. I don't think your hair can get as high as his. I'd, I'd have to... I could make a, a picture look like it. He's we'll got nice structure. Okay. You know, I, I there is the one move from game one that I really want to talk about, but I'm overblowing it. But it really was my phone was dead at the stadium. I, otherwise, I would have been texting you and Joe's the whole time. But like, what the hell was that about? Maybe we'll get there. Maybe we won't. Then we opened up with Judge. He did not hit his 61st home run, Jake. He had hit his 61st home run. He hit that in Toronto. He's been true, chasing. True. He's been chasing 62 throughout this series, and yeah, if you live on the internet, you know that's been a cesspool of obnoxious kids behind fake accounts that don't understand what's happening, and um, a weird mix of Judge not seeing pitches. Today, he got a lot of pitches. Um, put some big boy swings on him, probably too, too much of big boy swings. It looks like he, he swung out of his shoes a couple times because he actually saw a couple to hit today. But yeah, I, I mean, judge. What's the? What are they being obnoxious about? There's bad young fans that are on Twitter, and I know we don't like to harp on it, so that's why I was trying to move quick past it. That are you know from Blue Jays or Rays or any other fandom that naturally dislike the Yankees. That are like, oh, you guys complain about him not getting pitches. What are you guys doing? It's uh, it's ugly. I, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, I haven't seen a lot of that. Yeah, I've been starting to see some non-baseball crowd stuff, so they're like, upset "Well, they need to stop doing the punch ins." When yeah. I, I didn't know what people were complaining about, and then I saw what it was because I'm watching. Yes, then I saw them showing like a college football game and a complete split screen with a judge at bat. What a way to make people hate baseball! <laughs> I mean, I would fucking hate whatever's if I'm watching a Yankee game and. Three times a game, they're putting a quarterback 
going for a drive, you know, a red zone drive on my screen. I would hate that quarterback and that team and that network. Why are they doing that to people? People watch what they want to watch. A judge at bat is pretty accessible. Oh, so I'm, I'm the complete opposite. I'm I'm the complete opposite. It's the home run record is the best record in sports. So you can watch your your Michigan college football game on a Saturday, and yeah, drop drop me some judge at bats. I I want to see the history. Um, I, I I have no I have I stand with the people that are upset that they were upset he was getting walked. They were upset they were doing cut ins and he was getting five pitch walked, and everyone's like, well, this that's that's the bad look for baseball. No, I think they just don't want to see it at all. I think if they saw the judge home run, I think Swerve fans would be stoked. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a bummer. I mean, hey, it goes back to what I was saying. Remember, the Yankees clinched Tuesday in Toronto. And remember, there was a whole argument that and faction of Yankee fans that were like, they're definitely going to sit judge. It's clearly weighing on them. Um, they ended up dh him after they party and all that stuff. And he runs into one and, you know, Thank God, because this, this would be an ugly sports topic if not. If we were on day however, where Judge was still sitting at 60, holy smokes. But the fact that he has 61. Um, and yeah, the Orioles were just a little more timid than you would have liked than you would have liked this series. And hopefully they go to Texas and I still feel like he's gonna run into one and uh, you know, that's that's where you wanna be. Just clear it. Yeah, you hope so, because Boone talked about you know, giving him a day. He's not going to play both of the doubleheader. So you really hope he punches one early in the series. Um, and then they can rest him because they, they want to sit him one of these days. I know they have three days off in between, so they don't have to. And if Judge wants to play, he will. But Boone was talking about that, like, want to. And and um, I didn't like that he expanded a little bit. I don't think he liked it either. Like, you heard Flash talking about it, and you could see that his swing is changing a little bit. I think he's his launch angle has changed a little bit these last couple of days of more uh, pop up or you know higher hits and line drives. And for a while he was doing he was staying, he was saying so disciplined, not chasing, uh, keeping his swing. I, I'm not right. Well, I'm not worried about anything here. But it, I would it I would like to. It's it sucks that it seems like he has to change his swing and approach to get this versus the Orioles. Like he had to because they were really weren't giving him much until. Uh, kind of Braddish today. Yeah, Braddish came out a, l- a little bit. Kudos to him. And yeah, I mean, hey, when you get Jack Curry running hot on the internet streets, that's when that's when you know you're not attacking enough the Orioles. But yeah, it's uh, hey, let's let's be happy. We're at 61. Like you're saying, you know, the double header day becomes really interesting because they're definitely not going to play him in both of those games. So unless they DH him both. Yeah, I mean, even then. You just you just leave yourself open to a window of oh you guys really doing this when you know I thought you were the Yankees chasing chasing rings and all that stuff so let's hope it doesn't get to that point. True. Um, you want to talk about Chi Chi? Yeah, because the Yankees and this is a little known fact: the Yankees found Chi Chi Gonzalez on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn. They are the number one job website in the world. That's not on here, but I want to relay that to people because it is. It's true. Uh, There's no discussion in my head. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. So if you are, you know, maybe looking for a spot start on your baseball team or if you're looking for someone to come in for more than a spot, spot start in your organization, LinkedIn is the place to find them. There's simple screening questions there that makes it easy, uh, whether you're looking to be hired or you're looking to do the hiring. And if you are looking to do the hiring, why don't you go to LinkedIn Jobs as they help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free. It's a good price. At LinkedIn.com slash Yanks, baby. Whoo. That's LinkedIn.com slash Yanks to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply, but go check out LinkedIn. You guys know who they are. They're an industry leader. Um, and get your spot start today from Chi Chi. Chi Chi. All right. The bullpen is the biggest thing. If you didn't pay attention, 
you know, some people listen to our show. They're not diehard fans, but they want to stay up to date, especially come postseason and be knowledgeable. And or they're, you know, Giants fans or football and they're like, these games don't matter. The bullpen is getting very, very interesting. It was interesting already. But now what happened over the week and was that Zach Britton, who I think they were trying, they wanted to win a spot. They're giving a lot of chances. He comes in in game one of this series and leaves hurt in the middle of it. And then they put him on the IL. He's out. Zach Britton is trying to get on the spot, uh, rushing back. Kudos to him. He it must be crushing. He put in a ton of work to get back. He's he's injured. He's off. No more Zach Britton chances of making the postseason roster. Yeah, there was. Uh, I think there was some. I'll, I'll call out some fans in the stands. I think the Mike Stanton crew, like they were, they were like booing Britain, and it was like, "Who are you guys? Get out of here!" Because uh, Zach Britton has a MLB career that anyone that ends up in a bullpen absolutely dreams of, and the fact that he even went on hyperdrive to try to come back for this Yankees team uh, says a lot about him and you know what he's looking to do. With, with the rest of his career. So that sucked to see. I think it was a 91-mile-per-hour fastball. That was the game I was at. I gave Joe's a bump, and I was like, 91. Uh, and then I think the next pitch uh, went to the backstop, and he just gave the the international sign for I don't got it. So, uh, you know, hat off to Zach Britton. We appreciate him trying to hustle back because – if he looked anything like Zach Britton, <laughs> he would be in uh he would easily be in a, a fun part of this bullpen conversation right now because there's there's innings to be snagged if you want them. Yeah, because in the post game when everyone's going to Boone to find out what happened to uh, Britton, one of the beat reporters says, What about Holmesy? He's only been used once in the last week. Is he dealing with something? And Boone says, Matter of fact, he is. And he's not going to be able to pitch until the DS game one. Clay Holmes has a right shoulder strain. Um, He sustained it in the series against the Blue Jays up in Toronto before this one. And he will not be able to pitch until the DS. So you're not going to get any tune-up outings out of Holmes. He hasn't been good the second half, so I don't know what he was going to be. But we're losing options now. So it sounds like Clay Holmes is going to be on the roster, but I also think it has to be a coin flip because very well he could say it still hurts by then. And it's a shoulder strain. So those it's not unlikely. Yeah, it's uh it's interesting because what does uh what does right shoulder strain mean? Our our guy Shackle tweeted out he's on a on day five of a week of no throw, according to Booney. Um, and home should start ramping up early next week. That would put him in line for the division series. So uh this alternate site that's brewing, uh, and you know, Booney said that the Yankees themselves they were gonna figure out some kind of scrimmaging inter squad stuff because there's such a long layoff this year between the playoffs uh, for when, you know, the top, the one and two seeds, the Yankees and the Astros, they're essentially going to go a week without playing ball, which, you know, it enters a rest versus rust, which is a classic sports conversation, but especially baseball, I mean, seeing live batting and especially, you know, in a game environment is just totally different than anything else that playoff game at home. Right. Right, and that's uh, you know, when even when we get to Wandy, who's been beloved and trusted, his uh, <laughs> you know, Wandy's gonna be facing Matt Carpenter, mano y mano. Probably neither of them wearing shoes and pants in Somerset, and then the next outing will be in the Bronx with people going absolutely insane. So, a lot of layers to to peel there. But Clay Holmes, yeah, and I I know I told the people and and. The Yankee fans already know, but you you go back to that first outing where we saw Clay Holmes really, like, in his head about it. And, uh, yeah, he's, you know, since early July, the guy's been a 6 ERA reliever. Guys are also hitting off of him when when he's not walking them. So 
yeah, I have no idea what you do with that. And it, it becomes, uh, <laughs> you know, on October 10th or October 11th, whatever it is, who else is there and where, what's their current standing? Because I think, I think that's going to affect Clay Holmes more than if Clay Holmes looks good in a side session. I don't know what's going to affect anything. That's the, it's kind right. of the bummer about them all going and not going and pitching in Texas is we're out, which whatever we, we don't have a say obviously. And it doesn't, they shouldn't cater to the fans being able to see what, what they got, but we don't get to see what Carpenter looks like. We don't get to see what Wandy looks like, what clay looks like. So the first time we see them is going to be in the postseason. But as a fan, that's like a little jarring because we're going to be sitting there. All right, here comes Wandy. And seen him in three weeks. What's he got? And that's that's where you you mentioned this before the show, and I, I think there's more overlap in these statements than than it, it could probably come off as. But I think the Yankees they made a conscious decision that for Matt Carpenter, Clay Holmes, and Wandy Peralta, guys that if they're healthy, there's really not a discussion to be had with where the roster currently is. They said, well, screw it. We're, why send them to Texas? Let's keep our own eyes on them. We, we think, us the Yankees, we can get them ramped up just as good as two appearances in a Texas series or five at-bats in a Texas series. I think that's kind of the statement they made. But on the other side of that, like you're mentioning, <laughs> we, uh, we're going to see some Miguel Castro uh, and Albert Abreu in Texas uh, this week, which if one of them has one good outing, does that change something? I mean, we're starting to get into Looney Tune land. Yeah, you mentioned Castro and Abreu. They're in the mix, yeah. says Booney. Um, have they been pitching? Because they've been healthy. But Castro's been down in AAA. I'm interested to know what those two guys, especially Abreu, is stretched out to. Uh, I can look it up, I, I, unless BBD, if you can. I don't know. But you mentioned them. And then today, where should we go next? Marinac- Marinaccio comes out today with a shin thing. Right. Said it, it was flaring up. Oh, it sounds like shin splints to me, but uh, you can't really get that from just pitching. And I, I think you could play through that. I have no idea. I have terrible shin splints. But, well, shin's burning to me that, I don't know anything else, but I don't know a lot. Anyway, they think he's going to be okay. He's gotten an MRI for this in the past. He's been dealing with it all year, Ron Marinaccio, so they think he's all right. But it's just another, okay, now a little asterisk of doubt. Like how many relievers do we have no asterisk of doubt about? Um, I mean, it depends how, how much you want to raise a, an asterisk. It's kind of like Lou Trevino and Johnny Luizaga. Like, you just know what they are. Like, there's, I, I guess, like, injury or lack of use isn't in play. Like, Lou Trevino is going to be Lou Trevino, and Jonathan Luizaga is going to be Jonathan Luizaga. I think you Trevino, can... ha- th- both of those guys have some postseason experience. Right. I don't think Laza's is great. I think Trevino has some, he had, you know, in the wild card against the Yankees, I think he had pitched three good innings against them. Mm-hmm. And then... He faced the White Sox when the White Sox beat the A's, I believe. Uh, Luizaga got... He wasn't great at the end of last year, but I think last year he gave up some runs or walks. But before that, he wasn't really used as a guy in 19. I know he got some innings in 19 right. and in and in 20. He was almost their sneak attack guy. That they were yeah. like, we like this guy, let's put him in the mix. We were. I think I remember being a little surprised. Like, really? Like more, him over over um, Arvino? Like, he, like that was when they right. made the switch, kind of mm-hmm. in, in nineteen or or maybe it was twenty. I forget. Um, Looks to me, Castro threw fifteen pitches in his last rehab. It, he's been at about fifteen in like five straight appearances. That doesn't um, do much for me. Yeah. What's Abreu? Abreu, his last four: fifteen, twenty, sixteen, twenty. They need length. Then it doesn't they, appear they, they, like any of them are up downs or anything. So, 
they only have Herman right now. If they're if if Tyone's the fourth starter and Herman is becoming the swing man or the bolt guy or whatever, he's the only one that can give him length besides Litke. But and I, there's room for Litke on the team now, I believe. I think so. But I guess Litke's going to be that guy because then he's not a lefty guy. He's going to need to be like every time you use him, he's a three inning guy. Well, the the other thing that is in play here, and hopefully over a five game set against, and this is probably something we should talk. Well, let's we'll save it because it's looking like it's very much going to be Cleveland and Tampa that will advance to play the Yankees, which I think that's kind of good news. But um, <laughs> Herman Circle, uh, as a guy that they are definitely going to try out to be their multi inning weapon. Um, and he's kind of the only guy, like you're saying, with Litke, um, but weapon is an interesting word there. Um, yeah, I, the thing that is slightly different, and, you know, as we hopefully put things in a good bucket, you know, Cole has to be Cole. I know he hasn't been as as nails as he, we would have hoped recently, but, you know, Garrett Cole is a guy in a postseason outing that you you're expecting six innings from, um, which in theory should get you to Lou, Johnny, F. Ross, Ron, something like that. Um, Nestor Cortez, I, he deserves the respect to be talked about a guy that you should expect to go six innings in a playoffs that he um, should be talked about that way. We love ourselves some Seve. We know, we know in a seven-game series you're going to need that <clears throat> length, and maybe Domingo in the five gamer is really going to have to prove that he can be that guy or a guy. They're not all going to go six innings, you know? No. Cause the Yankees, I can see them pulling a guy at 4.2 because they like the matchup when he's at 70 pitches and cruising. I hope they don't really fall into that. Cause killing the bullpen has hurt him before. It is not. It is good and bad. The Yankee that the ALDS has that off day hurts them because it kind of it lessens the advantage you have by winning the division and the other team having to go play three in a row for the wild card or two in a row helps them with the bullpen situation right now because I got you know Herman is a long man and then Trevino Luizaga. Marinaccio, Efros, Wandy, those are our five that we they have to pitch with leads late in the game or tie game or down one. Right. And then it's I mean Chapman, I guess we have to talk about Chapman. He has a bad outing today, but it was like odd bad because he and Boone said this in the post game. He's like he's he was he was he walked he was competitive though. It wasn't like when you see Chapman just completely lose the zone. But also, it wasn't anything I'm excited or trust or anything. So, like, how many guys are going to be out there that, like, you know, Litke, that, okay, we like Litke, but do we like him in a big spot and big situation? Chapman, he's there just to eat innings? Slash be a lefty guy. I, I think that's that's part of their hope, at least in a playoff series. Um because the other guy we haven't mentioned who who was clean today and they're they're doing their damnest in a tight time to make him a reliever is Clark Schmidt. Um, who at least Clark, you know, his stuff can pass the eye test. Um, it's just a, it's a totally different gig than he's done his whole life up until this point. Yeah, bullpen is super worrying, man. I mean... The Braves bullpen was supposed to be a concern last year, and then all of them combined right, right. to be this amazing unit. The Washington Nationals bullpen was their weakness, and they figured it out in the back end. Mm-hmm. So they did. They did throw the pitcher back there to help out, do some heavy lifting. All right, Corbin would jump in between his starts and throw. So you wonder if the Yankees would tap into something like that's that. That's what I'm starting to think. Like if they win the DS, they have to win it on the backs of those five guys that we named. You got to win three games, right? So in those wins, you can do it with 
Trevino, Loisaga, Efros Wandy, like those four. Well, you keep going and the stakes get higher and all that. You know, does Cole have to come out of the pen? I, I don't think I, that scares the hell out of me. Does Savvy have to come out of the pen on a throw day? This the way that Scherzer did, the way that Corbin did. Maybe. Yeah, I mean the- pen is officially like scaring me. Right. It's so unproven in any role. Like none of these guys, besides Loisaga, one season was a lockdown seventh inning guy. Eighth. I think it was him and Chavin, right? Was he getting the eighth? It was in Britain? Check. But yeah, it's uh getting dicey. sorting thing didn't help too much um yeah it's it's all out there it's all out there in the yankees hopefully (laughs) it's something they pride themselves on being a strength you know going into a playoff matchup whether it's the rays or cleveland they're going to very clearly have their guys that they think pair up first better hitters they're going to view the whole thing completely analytical but I do think you're right to look out for. We could be overlooking Herman. I mean, hey, if Herman comes out, let's say Garrett drops it. It's the start he's been waiting for. Game one, Yankee Stadium, Cleveland or Tampa, and he gives us seven innings. They go bullpen, bullpen, good job. Nestor, he's up and down. He's battling. He gets out of it. It's, let's say it's 5.1. It's time to go. You know, it feels like ah, maybe they go to a guy to get out of the inning, but they're going to give Herman that chance, right? Yeah, they're going to, they're going to, that's what I'm saying. They can't use Herman. I think I said this last time, like for one inning. Like if you bring him in, he's right. got to be used. Like when they used Patrick Corbin out of the bullpen, he, he would come in in the sixth inning and he'd give, he went the sixth, seventh, and the eighth, you know? A couple times he went just one to get the save and shit. It's going to be interesting, but just prepare yourself that, you know, our starters might be coming out of the bullpen in the postseason. The lack of experience, it's make or break in my mind. Remember Savvy wild card game? Sure do. Some holes. It's not. It's not a good feeling. And the wild thing is, when we had like the best bullpen ever, they got overused, and it became our weakness. So how about that? You can't overuse a not best bullpen ever. So you need some depth and some long men. We'll see. And yeah, just with that, like I said before. The starting pitching situation going into the playoffs is the best we've had. Um, 19 was pretty good, right? Paxton? But depends how you feel about the fourth. And what Sevy can give you. Right. I guess. What was 19? Is it Tanaka. I love Tanaka. I'm blanking. I think Paxton did get game one of that. But then Tanaka, and then was it CC after? Hap is Mr. September, so, you know, we were feeling good about him going in. Paxton, Tanaka, Sevy. Oh, Sevy did come back. CC went to the pen. But, I mean, Nestor had an amazing season. So, and Cole is Cole, but Cole is also dicey Cole. (laughs) Would have loved his most recent start to be fully good. Gets one more, though. Yeah. 
Well, he's going to throw like 60 and bounce. Make him count. Yeah. How did they? They only started three games in the DS. They swept in 19. They play the Twins or something? Yeah, they did. I think the pitching, that 2019 team was pretty good, man. It's a good team. I mean, the, the, that was a juice ball year, and the lineup felt invincible. I mean, that was the year that everyone's OPS seemed to be in the eights, and, and they raked. But, I mean, you Bro know, I, I liked Paxton, and I, I know he finished strong. And Tanaka, obviously, his playoff reputation up until that point. Um, but yeah, I, I think you can pretty firmly say it, it always depends on performance. It's the postseason, but Cole, Nestor, Seve, Seve with a couple starts, um, and even JMO as the four, I, I think this is our best starting rotation heading into a playoffs and hopefully one or two guys kicking in from the bullpen can, can make that formula a little better. Yes, I only have full faith in one of the guys of the four, but I guess it's our best of the past years. So I, it's bottom. tough for me to say that when I... Nestor's your only guy? Yeah. I mean, it would be savvy if I saw him for a bunch more starts, and if he start gets one more start, then maybe. But savvy also in the postseason hasn't always been the best recipe. Even when he beat the Twins in 19, I think he threw like 80 pitches through four innings or something like that and loaded the bases twice and escaped, and it was the Twins. Um, so still looking for him like to be savvy in the postseason. Nestor's never started a postseason game. We saw savvy there. So uh, amazing regular season from all those guys, but as far as postseason comes, I'm still a little uh, not through the moon. I uh, they have the on their best days, absolutely. But sure, I mean, you know, Sevy that year came back after only those three starts. Um, yeah, you know, what's he, how many starts is he getting this year? He he has more postseason experience. Well, he pitched earlier this year, and now he's going to get, uh, what is it, three or four? Three starts. Three, but he pitched like he pitched this season. Like that was Sevy. He didn't have any regular season or spring training. I don't think he got he got hurt again. Nineteen, and he's got the experience now that that you're looking for. So I I think you can firmly say the Yankees' starting rotation is the best it's been in Yan recent Yankees history. Yeah, I just think context looms large because it doesn't mean I'm like incredibly confident with it. It's always been their weakness. The bullpen is 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 interesting because there's. Why is this guy has to break out and be the closer? I mean, hmm. <laughs> that that's what needs to happen. Or the stopper. You or know, the like, stopper, and then Trevino the closer. But like if I, I know we're not lined up to play the Blue Jays, but when that, you know, when the Blue Jays flip their lineup and it's Springer, Bichette, Guerrero, like if that crew is coming up in the eighth inning, that would have to be Johnny Loisica. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I, Yankee fans were not used to having kind of what's supposed to be the future of baseball and use your best guy to go to go get those guys, whether it's the seventh or even the eighth inning. But yeah, and you know, Johnny can go two innings. He could go one point two. He uh he kind of does have to step up and be the guy. Someone him, Trevino, even at Frost, Marinaccio, whoever, you need like one and we said this, two guys to step up and be full faith guys. Hand him the ball and say, "Hell yeah!" Uh, and we got to we're gonna have to wait to see who that is. Yep. Yeah. The other updates that we were gonna do, I don't know if they're brought to us by anyone. I think so. I think they're brought to us by Muggsy. I love Muggsy jeans. I just when I was at the game Friday night, stood up, and the woman behind me said, "Are those Muggsies?" And I said, "Yeah, that's all I wear." Wow. Tell My Katie. brother wasn't in Muggsy, so we threw him. Tell Katie you were flirting at the game. Muggsy's great weekend for some Muggsy jeans, baby. Fall is here, which means you need to up 
your style game. Say goodbye to the gym shorts and flip-flops. It's over. It's tailgate season. It's pumpkin patch season. Little winery, maybe some playoff baseball. Muggsy knows the drill, and they know the thrills. They're the most comfortable jeans on the planet in every shade you could want and need. And right now, with code JOHNBOY, you're getting 10% off at Muggsy.com. Store-wide. They got their denim jacket. I've been busting that out. Swag. Muggsy, they're the kings of comfort and fashion. Um, And it's time. Like, it is time. If you're going to a pumpkin patch, you should be in your Muggsies. You got to be a little athletic. If you want to carry that thing, get in a proper squat position. Don't throw out your back. You better be in a good pair of stretch jeans, and that's what Muggsy has. So, go to Muggsy.com. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Get 10% off your entire order at Muggsy.com. Position players update. Ben Intendi is taking dry swings mm. with no contact. So picture that in your head. It sounds so boring. But he's doing that. I do it almost every day, so it's just different scales, though. I'll do it right now with this water bottle. It's pretty good. We got a little noise on the way by. Not that time. Those are technically wet swings. That's a water bottle. Well, 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 well. Um, so that's, uh, he's still not expected back to the DS, I guess. I, if, if DS Carpenter, we were told he was going to play in the Texas series it seems internally they said "Ooh, we don't really have a lot of control or a lot of facilities in texas let's just have the guys that we want to make it back in time do seven days straight in tampa friday or be monday unless they went today not tampa right they want to go somerset 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 yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean that's close to me i'll just go check them out so I was monday say- tuesday wednesday thursday friday Saturday, Sunday, Monday, they travel back. If they're traveling back, Tuesday's the game. I think so. So, yeah. They also might run a couple scrimmages at the stadium or something like that. I could see I once once the boys get back from Dallas, just bring everyone to the stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, they, like seven, days, stuff. seven days of sessions that we're in control of <laughs> rather than go to Texas for doubleheader and fly out there and all that. So Carpenter, so we don't get to see him. And I will say this, Jake. Yes. Video of him hitting a home run in bullpen in the BP did do something for me. Yeah, you talk about fun stadium conversations. Uh, you know, we the stuff you only get at a stadium. You know, our our guy David Rifkin, who is a, a Yankees, uh Yankees king of uh, the Delta suite there. He was there for batting practice with his son. And uh, <laughs> he said, you could tell when Carpenter was hitting when you weren't even looking at the net. He said the sound his bat was making was different. And that's just some good Yankee Stadium stuff. Because uh, a reminder, this guy had the best 100 at-bats in baseball this year. Um, he, he, the second he got hurt, he said he was coming back. Uh, it looks and feels like if the Yankees had to go and win the division in Texas or make a playoffs, make the playoffs in Texas, he would be going on the trip. Uh, so, yeah, like you're saying, it's it's a bummer we don't get to see him. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I don't love the scope of Wandy and Carp facing off in front of, you know, some of the Yankees nerds just making sure their numbers are right. And then the next the next time they're playing a baseball game will be, you know, in the rowdiest the Bronx gets. What's, hypothetically, Carpenter looks great. He's sure. on the roster. <laughs> that leads to more problems. That's why I tweeted yesterday, like, if, if Carp's healthy, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, and people are like, 
why whose spot does he take there's no room for him and I'm like well that's why it's interesting yeah because he had the 100 best at bats in all of baseball and he's he averaged like seven pitches per plate appearance i think it was actually 5.7 which is nuts and he just looked really good and if he's not starting it's a great great pinch hit option off the bench and that's what I'm going to guess is their starting goal. Uh, it, it needs to be said that Giancarlo Stanton hit a home run off of a fastball. Um, 92, so not high velo, but fastball. Not high velo, but a fastball, and that's what we've, we've been looking and, and hoping for. And he did crush it. It was a Stantonian home run. Um, that, yeah... <laughs> At least for the DS, I have to assume it's pinch hit, and I have to assume there's options to be pinch hit for between our catchers or our shortstop. Um, I mean, potentially Bader, who I have to assume is going to start, um, and potentially our our third baseman if it's a if it's a tough righty. Why why wouldn't you? So. Um, that's where my head is at. Um, and if he looks good in a couple pinch hit at bats, which sounds nuts, hmm. is can he find his way to the outfield? Because I think the Yankees would rather throw a a hobbled <clears throat> non-outfielder Matt Carpenter into the outfield for five or six innings rather than Giancarlo Stanton, whether it's Yankee right field or whether it's, say, a Houston left field, um, which we've seen seen him play. Going over the roster. Yes. They might go 14 pitchers and 12 hitters, which I think sounds a little stupid because I don't think their bench is that good enough to warrant that, and they need they can't burn out their pitchers. But if they were trying to win... Five-game you know, set, I think. Five, I think for five game set, yeah. Teams have done it before. And the Yankees like haven't... How they're trying to deploy their bench becomes the interesting part if they do that. Because in the bench, you have a catcher, right? So let's say Travis starting, you have Higgy. Confirmed. One catcher confirmed. Tilo for speed, but now he's sent down. We're still, until the playoff roster is announced, we have to assume he's on it because he was brought in by the Yankees org to be their pinch runner. Now, Hicks played well of late and can play in the outfield. Nice catch today. DJ? I think we've got about three games to find out. Didn't think he looked great. He got a hit today. That was all right. Dribbler up the middle. Swings early on. First couple games back. Like I had nothing, the, nothing you'd put in the plus column. Okay, that's a good way Impossible to put it. Possible to feel great. Yeah. Marwin? Now that's where I want to pause. Because why the hell, when Marwin came in for DJ LeMayu in game one, Marwin comes in for DJ LeMayu, which was planned for DJ only play half the game. Right. Marwin has played third base. Right? Yep. This season. So very easy just to take Marwin and switch him at third base. Very easy tr- sub. Instead, they put Marwin to left field where Oswaldo Cabrera was. Okay, Oswaldo Cabrera can play third base. He's played third base a lot this year, a ton in the minors. He's a third baseman. Put him at third base. No, they put Oswaldo at shortstop, and they move IKF to third base. Seems interesting to move IKF off shortstop when he's going to be the starting shortstop in the postseason, and he's been the whole year. Seems odd to move Oswaldo Cabrera out of left field in Yankee Stadium, a difficult left field to play that he's only played a handful of times, and you would think the more reps and innings he can get out there, the better, since it seems like that's where he might be playing and starting. 
The only thing I can think is a sliver of a crack of maybe Marwin's off the postseason roster because as Waldo's the backup shortstop if needed. And Hicks can go to left off the bench. And Marwin's not needed anymore. I'm reading way too into it, but it was so weird to me when I was at the stadium and saw it. I was like, what are they doing here? I don't think you are reading too much into it. I I, I think it's it, it's a potential postseason plan. Um, whether it's pinch hitting for an IKF with Matt Carpenter, um, whether a Benny comes back this this postseason, if Hicks stays hot, there could be potential innings needed at shortstop. I obviously am not going to do the whole song and dance with people. Oswaldo Cabrera is supposed to be like an infielder first. <laughs> um, we've, we saw him play shortstop before. The fact he was on the field with IKF and he was at shortstop, I'm taking that as a significant piece of information. Uh, I don't know if that's significant for the start of a playoff game. I don't know if that's significant for an extra inning situation in a playoff game. Um, but yeah, especially if DJ is... Any sort of DJ LeMahieu, or I, I don't know. If, if he can walk, hit, and play a little bit of defense, which he says the defense is the least affected, I mean, DJ would then be your backup first baseman uh, behind Anthony Rizzo. DJ can play third and second as well. And as Waldo is that super utility knife that he plays everywhere. So I do think... Because if they have Hicks and Tilo on the bench... As Waldo starting in left, and IKF is starting at shortstop. You pinch it for IKF with Carpenter. If you want a lefty bat, hell, even Hicks—they've done that a bunch. You want a lefty bat, and that now allows you to move Oswaldo Cabrera from left field to shortstop, and you can put Hicks in left field. Tilo in left field if he runs for someone or something, which was just like kind of a maneuverability that I wasn't playing around with in my head because I just thought Marwin was going to be there. But it opened my eyes to like Marwin, there may be a way where Marwin isn't on the postseason roster, which stinks for him because he went pole to pole on as a bench piece. But if DJ and Carp are both healthy and they want them on the roster, Marwin's obsolete. Another avenue to get there. Whoever's playing third base, Donaldson, DJ, Carpenter, pinch it. Like, they're candidates to be pinch run for. So that's Tilo a, pinch Tilo runs for pinch one of those run guys. Goes to left. Goes to the outfield. IKF goes to third. Oswaldo goes to, yeah. And All this availability means Marwin might not be on the roster. Which is ironic in 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 a couple ways. But, yeah, I, I could definitely see that playing out. And... Again, I, I don't know if we get there, and I, I don't want to say I hope we get there, but say Matt Carpenter looks good, or say Andrew Benintendi comes back and he looks like Andrew Benintendi. I know we're dreaming. I think we're talking CS stuff here. But if you want to actually get those guys in a lineup, and we're talking you know, left field in Houston, and Carpenter looks good and he can move around enough to play out there, Oswaldo Cabrera has been a second-best hitter on our team to Aaron Judge who, you know, just chased down Maris and tied the home run record, that I could see, if one of those guys looked healthy, I could see Oswaldo get the start at shortstop. And I cap not? If it's like a tough righty matchup, which, you know, Houston has those guys. I, again, you know, they're, I'm throwing big ifs out there. But if Carpenter or Benintendi look like Carpenter or Benintendi, let's see how everyone's looking in the playoffs. Because you have you have options. I mean, that was my first thought. Well, if you're saying Peraza is equal to IKF or better at shortstop, well, he's much better with the bat. In his last Cabrera. 20 games, he has a... Cabrera, he has a one dot OPS. <laughs> Peraza too, but Peraza too, but <laughs> yeah. If Benny's healthy and can play left field, well, you would play Oswaldo Cabrera 
over IKF. I mean, as well. I mean, as, not the Yankees because they love him, but not up until now. But again, to to see as well the Cabrera at shortstop and IKF at third this late in the season felt significant. I agree. It put my brain in a puzzle. IKF's numbers are slightly better versus lefty that I could, if the playoffs go like I was just laying out, the Yankees line up with Houston. Um, one of those two guys I mentioned is is looking good enough to start. I do think they would give Cabrera a start over IKF against a tough righty, whether that's Verlander or McCullers or whoever it may be. Cool. I like it. Let's get there. I think Oswaldo has he's is his numbers still worse against lefties too. Like they can do the IKF pinch hit if that's he's actually what they kind want. of balanced. Who? Cabrera. His his major league splits. It's a very small sample yeah. versus lefties, but I'm glad, I'm he's, glad he's, the numbers he, are good. Yeah. But. Yeah. He's better versus uh lefties from the as a right handed hitter. So far in the small sample. In the minors he was I think the book was on a lot him better versus in the minors. Was if you call, better. if you, if I just, you told me to answer on the spot, I would say his numbers were way better when he was hitting lefty. It just looks better. Hitting as a lefty. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, hitting as a righty. Technically, his stats are better, but it's twenty six at bats. Yeah. 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 Want to do some awards from this series? More talking points. Let's do some awards. awards. Awards are brought to you by Manscaped. Oh man, escaped. The intro says to scream really loud. How about that? There's got to be a better way to get my dagger clean and shiny safely. (laughs) This is what I used to deal with when I cut myself shaving before I knew about Manscaped. Thank you, Manscaped, for keeping my dagger slick and ready for wherever the night takes me. Manscaped is trusted by over 6 million men worldwide. Why don't you join the movement by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with code YANKS. No horror stories here, people. Take care of your downstairs with the Lawnmower 4.0, the fourth generation trimmer, cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. Also there, Weed Whacker, get that nose and ear hair out of here. No one's into that. There's not a nose hair, ear hair, kink fetish out there. I've looked. Manscaped with their performance package 4.0. They throw in gifts. You get the boxers. We all wear them. I wore mine yesterday. Beebs probably has them on now. Jim, maybe. Trevor Plouffe. Get 20% off and free shipping with code YANKS at manscaped.com. Go check it out. Take care of your downstairs. Thank you, Manscaped. James has like just been screaming lately, so I can do the scream from from him. That's what they wanted. Yeah, he's getting good. Does he uh, clean it up down there? No, it's gross. You gotta comb the shit out of his pubes when he changes diaper. <laughs> DVD, don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that. That's his son. My son. Messed up. Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Pride of the Yankees. Yeah. You get to go first. Of the Yankees, because I am closer to the big man upstairs. Uh, actually, it's because you're a uh, boofus. They need to be in touch with you more. Say that again. No, I'm just waiting for your pride. My pride of the Yankees is Nestor Cortez Jr. Uh, 7.1, one hit. 12 punch outs, two walks. He does a little funky nester in there again to strike a batter out. Like the crowd behind home plate starts reacting to it with oohs and ahs before the pitch even goes, and then he punches them. Um, I mean, it, A, an incredible start, but I mean, what a way to put a bow on this year. I mean, 28 starts, a 2 4 4 ERA. 158.1 innings, more than a strikeout per inning, a whip under one. Um, it's been incredible. He has now been one of the best starting pitchers in the past two years of baseball. Um, 
And he's just, uh, he's everything good. He's, he's fun. Uh, the pitching is fun to watch. His personality is ridiculous. And, like, even when he gives umps crap, it's funny. He just starts laughing at him. And he's just like, come on, man. Like, you need to be a little better than that. Like, we're both out here getting paid. Why don't you just be a little better? Um, revenge game, people forget uh, that Nestor was a Baltimore Oriole uh, for the first 4.2 innings of his career. Uh, shout out to the Hialeah kid. Just awesome all around, per usual. Per usual. Per usual. Shout out. Shout out. We just heard uh, Dan Dan, the produ- producer man, just made like a noise like he cut himself. Um, nice. Ah. Yeah. Not good. Uh, Curtain's Nestor, closed. man, when he went back to the leg kick the at the end there, he went the swinging delayed leg kick to get like his 12th strikeout or 11th to end the inning. Right. And he doesn't do that stuff anymore, really. And it was 94 right down the middle. So good. Um, it, his, his season is incredible. It's a really down year for offense. So ERAs are much lower. Like he has a, he ends the season as a two, four, four ERA last year. That would have been incredible. I think he's seventh in the AL. So that was even more wild to me. I don't know if seven is the right number, but he, he wasn't one or two. And I was like, Whoa, in the AL. Right. Um, but I think it's the second best season since the DH for any Yankee pitcher, according to ERA and FIP and all that, like beat Coney, um, or, or Coney's only got the better season since the DH. It's crazy season. Unbelievable. And what's cool is when you look at his pitch mix at the start of the year, he was a two pitch pitcher. He was a four seam guy and cutter and he was throwing a slider, but it was was very much a third pitch, like. 15 to 20%. Now remember they got into that stretch where they started hitting the cutter a lot. So you can see his graph where he just bumps up the slider with the cutter. And then he, and he yanked up his four seam to be like 50%. And then those two battled it around at like 25 and 25 and became a three pitch pitcher. So he had to make changes on the fly. It wasn't like set it and forget it. I'm going to do the whole year with this repertoire and shit. It's really impressive. And the whole reason he's good is because he made changes during the off season, bumped his four seam up from 88 to 93. I think average finishes the year average, average 92, but he used to, I mean, he used to sit at like 88 and he, he can dial it up to 94 whenever he wants. He just chooses when. Really, really amazing. Fun guy to root for. Fun. My pride of the Yankees, uh, Jacob Larns. Excuse me? Higashioka. Yes. It's Higashioka. He has the best offensive numbers from this season. You mentioned earlier pinch hitting for the catcher. And then using the backup catcher. That wasn't in play back in June, July. You got to keep Trevino in the game. Higgy was down bad. But the back end of his season has been really good. He's got an 833 OPS in September, October. He's got a 760 OPS in the second half of the season. And a 113 OPS plus, I believe, or... Uh, yeah, uh, with a 287 batting average, not a lot of on, on, on base, but 460 slug. And in his last couple games, he's hit really well. So, you, so he, it becomes now you, you, you can pinch hit for whatever, whoever, whatever catcher starts the game to get Carpenter at bat, to pinch run for them with Tilo, and then put the other in. And I, I, I hope Yankee fans realize like we're not losing much. Uh, besides pitch framing, Trevino is way better at pitch framing. Could keep him in, but it's not a bad option to pinch run or pinch hit for one of these guys if you have a f- more favorable matchup because Higgy's been holding his weight and then some the second half of the season. 
And pitch framing, I mean, that's also, you know, coming into this year, you would have said that's Higgy's strength. So uh, Trevino's just been so, so good at it. Uh, Trevino's just best ever. Higgy's been nails for second half of the year, like you said. I mean, it, it got to almost a scary point that it was like, man, you know, Higgy, and, you know, you're, you're our dude, but we, we got to see a little more. And he, he's, done, he's done more than that. His numbers on the year look okay. Um, you know, he was riding the interstate for a while with the three hit game. He, he jumps off of that and good for him. And, uh, we're lucky enough that these are two guys. I don't want to say we know, but we've, we've gotten to meet and hang out with. And remember when Trevino was taken off, uh, earlier this year and Higgy was struggling and Trevino, whenever he was sitting, he was giving Higgy a lot of love. Higgy was giving Trevino a lot of love when Trevino was going nuts this year. Uh-huh. These guys do get it. Like, you know, th- these guys are guys that fought to make MLB rosters. Um, they understand that they are there to do whatever the team needs, and they kind of have all year. So, uh, yeah, I mean, think about for basically this whole season, you know, I, I mentioned that our guy Rob Brantley got a game in there because he's a stud. It's been Higgy and Trevi all year. Uh, and that's pretty cool. And they're going to be riding into the playoffs. And I think Yankee fans have, or what you're saying, Yankee fans should have pretty similar f- feel to when these two are in the game. Yeah. And he hit a curveball for home or the series. He's feeling good. Next up. Mm. Oh, tough. You Yankee motherfucker. Sheesh. Holy smokes. Are you being, are you serious? Who are you giving this to? This is messed up, man. I don't. I mean, I guess it's got to go to Marwin, you know? It's just really. Holy shit, that, dude. For him getting in your head that much and you're up there. You know, you're with your dad and your brother. You're watching a game, and your your phone's dead. So, you know, you're looking down at me and Joe's, and you're yelling at us, Got fellas! F- fellas! You seeing this? You seeing this one there? The strain that Marwin put you through these past three days, it's just a little messed up. You're my guy. Um, so, I don't know. You know, I heard Marwin was told to play third base, and he was like, nah, man, I'm going to left. So, yeah, he's my mf for 0 for 1? Hitless. I got two options. You want me to go serious or serious? I mean, Which hand? Already felt fibby. Uh, right hand. This one? Yeah. Didn't know if you were saying you're right. No, no, no. My right. You're right. Peraza. Yeah, I thought so. This son of a bitch. Yeah. They play him, he hits. They play him, he hits. I mean, they're texting each other, hey, you guys can start Peraza today, but let's not get any hits. Need this kid to look bad. He's only here to soak it up. We're bringing him up to soak up the experience, take it in, and that's all. Struggle a little bit so he focuses in the offseason and comes back with a vengeance. Maybe he's mad at us a little. And this kid refuses to do that. Yeah. Just a total turd. He's got a 306 batting average, 390 on base percentage. 779 OPS, 124 OPS plus. He's got 11 hits. I mean, in the games that starts, you know, because pinch hitting's hard to do. And you usually don't hold pinch hit at bats against people. So if you look at, you know, when he got his full at bats, in games he started, 324 batting average, 410. On base percentage, 822 OPS. So when this kid starts, he gets his three at-bats, his three to four at-bats. 
I mean, he's just been amazing. Small sample size. His fault. Should have got called up earlier. Uh, just, just pissing me off every time I see him. Hitting, hitting, hitting. Dinking, dunking, running. And the umps, the umps, the umps knew what was up. You left early, kid. You're a punk. What, Blue? I didn't leave early. Yeah. But challenge it. Never mind. Your your coach already challenged something, and we, we were right. Sit down. That run doesn't count. Screw this guy. You good? Yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's, you know, you're like the 11th ranked prospect in the org, so you don't get proper run. Oh, wait, that's the other guy with the necklace. And he's been running the whole time. Uh, yeah, man, I, uh, is there any chance he's on the postseason roster? Could he replace Tilo? Any chance I blow my dick off with a gun? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of talking Giants Plaxico fans here, so... Yeah. Um, more of a Cheddar Bob. It would be kind of in honor of Cheddar Bob. Okay. No. That was the Cheddar Bob Award? No, that was my mf -er. Okay. Arwin and uh, Peraza. It's good. Regular old awards. Regular old awards. I'm going to go first. Yeah, you go first, loser. <laughs> David. I mean, first your son's pubes and now that. Huh. That's messed up, man. Oh, okay. I've got an award. Uh... I am going to go with the Subway Award. The Subway Award goes to Harrison Bader. Ooh, Jim. So close yet so far. The Subway Award is going to Josh Donaldson. Um, the Subway in New York City, I mean, they're, you know, synonymous, Jim, with each other. Uh, the Subway's a really interesting place, right? Like, you're gonna, sometimes you see some weird stuff. Sometimes you have some bad times there. Like, it's either too crowded or there's, you know, there's people being weird on there. Uh, sometimes the subway's kind of nice. Like, you have your headphones in, and you got a little bit of space, and you're just, whatever. But it's a necessary part of life for New York. Um, and I'm giving it to Josh Donaldson. Uh, just because that's what it feels like at this point. Like, I don't get excited to take the subway. But he's just kind of like a necessary part of our life up until this point. Um... And he ends up having, like, an okay series statistically. I think you can still butter knife the stats since he was has become a, a Faja. 286, 356, and 817 OPS. That's, like, who Josh Donaldson is supposed to be. So, I, like we've been saying for a little while now, like, we're, we're, we've been in this far with Josh Donaldson. I hope there's a world where he ends up being a, an October Yankee hero of some sort. Uh, right now, he's just he's kind of subway, man. I had a bad experience on the subway recently. Okay. That's all. Um, Donaldson. When you yeah. got lost? Uh, no. Always knew where I was. Just wasn't always going the right direction. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got nothing on Donaldson. He throws really hard, and that's cool. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> nothing to report, really. Okay. My award. Yes. 
Don't get too excited now because it might be rude. Okay. Toward, toward you. Damn it. It's not rude towards you. It's um make it five. So your award is the make it five award. Yeah. Yours, it sounded different when you said it. Yeah, and I told you, Dan Dan, the tech man's messing around with stuff. Um, the Make It Five Award is going... Uh, make It Five Hell Six or Seven Award. That might help you guess it. What do you want to say about our Hawaiian king, IKF? I already said a lot about him in the MF or segment. This award goes to Giancarlo Stanton. Mm -hmm. Four career home runs in Arlington. And I think he should make it five. It sounds better. It's a better number. It's more whole. And uh, I popped one. Let's pop one or two more in Texas and just feel a smidge better. One more in Texas would make me feel so good. Right? Also a potential autobiography for me. Uh, no, that'd be uh, like post-mortem autobiography. Title only. Your, your autobiography, every page should just be a potential title to your autobiography. So each page is just one sentence. A lot easier on you when you right. have to write it. And then... The name of the book is Titles of My Autobiography. And then people buy it, and then they realize that every page is just kind of a title. Putting from the rough. Okay. One more in Texas. All right. That's cool. On Stan's home runs, some people tweeted, I think it was Corey Clark said, did he move closer? Because it was something I was like, just move closer to the plate, right. man. I couldn't tell. I was also like phone only when I was watching it. But I'm going to go take a look. Okay. But you would like one more home run as well? I mean, when Stan hit that homer, I tweeted out, if Stanton looks like Stanton, we can start talking World Series again. Um, because, man, he was down bad. And if he can be playoff Stanton, like, that's... That's a video game character. That's that's something entirely different. He can hit anyone. He can he strikes fear into everyone. Like he's a game changing type player. So yeah, if he could get one in Texas, I would I can start the big dreams again. Also, how many homers does he have on the year? Is it twenty nine? So yeah, he needs to hit thirty. Yeah. He needs to hit his thirtieth homer. That seems super important. How many years does he have with thirty? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be a seventh with 30. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of, let's do that. For it. This man is for it. Spread the word nationwide. Your next award? My next award, a prestigious award is the More Important Chase Award. The More Important Chase. And this goes to... Rizzo. Why? James... The more important Chase Award. We've been talking a lot about Aaron Judge in the home run race. I haven't. I kind of strayed away. Yankees first baseman Anthony Rizzo. Oh, BBD update the leisure. Jimmy gets a point. He remains in second place. He moved into ninth place on the all-time hit-by-pitch list. And he is four... Hit by pitches behind Chase Utley. Hello, people. Wake up. 
Imagine if we did the show like that. Uh, Rizzo's been hit by a lot of pitches. The ninth most in Major League Baseball history. So how about that? That one hit him on the knee. It was kind of weird. He like kneeled into it. And then he was just staring at their dugout or their third base coach the whole time he was walking to first. And I, I, I was watching it on mute at my relative's house, but I don't know if they were talking about it, but it was, they showed the replay a couple of times. It was really weird. You know what? Did they say anything? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I saw him. He mouthed something like, read my lips, John boy, suck my D. That's what you heard? That's what I thought I saw. Kind of what you imagined. I don't know what's real. Kind of like you went to your happy place. Interesting, Jake. Super interesting stuff out of you. Jimmy, the last and most prestigious award of the episode. Update. I'm looking at a picture of Stan from September 21st and a picture of him from October 1st, and he did move closer to the plate. Last award of the episode, and my, I mean, we only have one more episode of awards left. Ooh. And that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to. Well, I'm not gonna tell you who I'm gonna give it to, because that's your whole thing is you have to guess it, and uh, since we are tied in the ledger right now, this is interesting going into next. You're tied with DVD. No, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, I've blown you away. Nope. There was that one episode where I gave you like everything. You kind of got them. It's a big up for me. Um, get cornered award. Get cornered. Um, Oswaldo Cabrera. Wrong. I take the lead. Never had the lead. I do now. You just got a dock too. There's never been a docking system. You've never once seen my books. It goes to Aaron Hicks, who goes into the corner, and this time. Instead of coming out benched, comes out to applause. Uh, mm. It's a much better time in the dark corner of left field in the Bronx. And Hicksy, I got to give him credit after those quotes, which I hated, being benched. And I was struck out with the bases loaded, and that still is such a big bugaboo. I got to go find his numbers on this year with the base loaded now after they update it from today. But that was a good play. And when he made that play and the whole stadium cheered and cheered and cheered, it was like, yeah, man. Yeah. The stadium can be pretty nice as much as they can be mean. Mm. So you better go do an interview about how nice everyone was for clapping for him. Oh, because if you if you if you if you want to boo when they're bad, you got to cheer when they're good. So, Hicksy, when the fans are bad, you can boo. Fans were good to you, so cheer. But he did end the season well for just such a weird season. Getting benched, they traded for a guy to replace him. Um, then traded for two guys to replace him. Really makes a nice catch. I think he's gonna be on the postseason roster. I'd take him over the over Marwin. I think. Still got some fire in that arm. But for him to go into that corner, come out with the ball and cheers, I thought that was a is a fitting moment. He uh he's ended up putting together a nice little September October, uh, which is it's funny. You know, there were certain points where we didn't think he was gonna play again, and I think he's now played nineteen games. Uh, and yeah, when he plays a focused left field, he's, he's like a pretty nice left fielder. He can cover a little ground. He's got a, got a really good arm for a left fielder. So I don't know. I mean, very interested to see, very interested to see how often, if often at all, we're seeing him in October. But I mean, good for him salvaging 
salvaging this season a little bit and, you know, after that article that stunk and how everything was going, the fact that we're, like, penciling him in the in the roster is pretty wild. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, but, you know, you go by OPS, he's not even the worst hitter on the team. Hmm. Guys with worse stats penciled in. I can't. Okay. Maybe we wrap it up. Well, we got how many games in Texas? Four games in Texas? Four games in Texas. A doubleheader Tuesday. We will be back on talking. I'd Yanks. rather tune into Wandy pitching to Carpenter <laughs> than watch that doubleheader in Texas. We we have to bump the beat reporters and see who's going to be going to Somerset because we need we need boots on the ground. I don't care about these games in Texas. What's going on, guys? It's Joe's McFly. I guess I'm in Somerset. I don't really know what's going on. I guess I'm in Somerset. Wandy's here. Carpenter's here. Uh, does anyone know where to go in Somerset? It's a nice town. Nice spot. Had a good time there. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. My other MF or hand? Chi Chi. I'm so Make, glad I didn't pick that. Making Montas look like a bad boy. Oh. oh.